My name is Jesse. Today I want to talk about a soil nutrient that's super important and you need to get it right because it is the difference between the corn crop on your right and the corn crop on your left. Let's talk about it. Welcome back to American Beef Ranch. My name is Jesse. We are a certified organic farm. We also do organic fertilizer, regenerative agriculture, and honestly, we like cows, we like dirt, we like crops, we like all of that. So we're all about it, we're into it. If you guys want more info, link in the description. Let's get right into the nuts and bolts. Like I said in the intro, the corn crop on your right and the corn crop on your left, the only difference is one nutrient. They got the exact same fertilizer program. They got the exact same foyer program. They were planted within one day of each other. They've got the exact same amount of water and they are drastically different, feet different on their height. And actually throughout my entire farm, the fields are categorized in how good they are by one soil nutrient and it's probably not the one you're thinking about. Now mid-season, if you were to look at these crops, you could see a significant difference and some people would normally go, hey, man, you gotta hit that crop over there with a bunch of nitrogen, get that stuff to jump up. And you're right. Now, first off, I'm organic and you can only do so much. Uh, there is organic nitrogen products and they work really well. The problem is, is that the soil is not working properly, nitrogen is only gonna get you so far. So these are all hit with the foliar and you can see there's still a significant difference. Yes, I got improvement out of this corn, but I didn't make it so much better that it, it is world shaking. And even here, it looks really drastic, but if you get out into the corn crop, over here, we have a typically an average of about a nine foot corn crop, where if you get out here, we have about a seven foot corn crop. Now that two feet is attributed to one cell nutrient and it's not nitrogen. Ladies and gentlemen, on a dry matter basis, a crop, a food crop is made up of 47% carbon. Let me say that again, 47% carbon on a dry matter basis. That means if you take away water, half of your plant is made up of carbon. The other top two nutrients are oxygen and hydrogen. Those three nutrients combined make up 90% of a plant. When the plant is in photosynthesis taking in that wonderful sunlight, what it does is it takes sugar, or basically carbon, oxygen, hydrogen, and it shoves it into the ground because it's making sugar. And then when it needs to build the plant up, it sucks that sugar back up. So it makes sense that the components of sugar are a big part of the plant, and they are. But how do I know that carbon is the only difference in these fields that make up the difference in my plants. Because I know the nitrogen ratios are the same. Organic matters are pretty dang close on both fields. The pH is very close on both fields. And the only significant difference I see is the carbon to nitrogen ratio. Now you're not gonna get this in a regular soil test. You have to ask for it. And you should be asking for a carbon to nitrogen ratio test. Now, I don't have enough carbon in my soil. We want at least 15 to one carbon to nitrogen ratio. At least we're shooting for 25 to one carbon to nitrogen ratio. That's because you use a lot more carbon than nitrogen because nitrogen only makes up 3% of the plant, right? If your soil is able to breathe and work, and if you want to figure out how to do that, check out this video right here. Then the next most important thing is making sure that you have enough carbon to build the building block of the plant. And then obviously oxygen's there. Hydrogen comes along with getting your pH in the correct status. And if you, do those things, guess what? You have an incredible crop. Now here on this field, our carbon to nitrogen ratio is 12 to one. And you can see it, 12 to one. It's getting to a pretty good spot. Over here, our carbon to nitrogen ratio is eight and a half to one. Up on the hill, which up on the hill is up on the hill, right? There's a field on the hill, it's a little bit. Carbon to nitrogen ratio is eight to one. In my worst field that was sagebrush for quite a long ways, and it's only been worked a few years and cultivated seven and a half to one. But guess what? I'm not the only one in this boat. Very high 90% of the soil in the country or in that is arable for farming has very low carbon to nitrogen. And guess what? When you have low carb, car, carbon to nitrogen, you have to exaggerate the other nutrients because the soil cannot work properly because your biology cannot come out of a dormant state until at least 15 to one. That's when your biology starts working. And when your biology starts working, the rest of those small micronutrients, nitrogen being the big one, that 
It isn't going to matter. Carbon is the building block to all living things. And if you get it right in your soil, you will not believe the benefit. You can see it behind me. 12 to 1, 8 to 1. Imagine if I had 15 to 1. Same water, same fertilizer, same water, same tillage program. Everything's the same except for the carbon in the soil. So ladies and gentlemen, don't forget, quit spending money on nitrogen because all you gotta do is keep buying that nitrogen over, over, and over again. You fix the carbon, and guess what? You can quit buying nitrogen altogether and save a whole lot of money and give that farm to the next generation and the dirt's gonna be better and the world's gonna be greener and life just, you know, gets better. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.